Hey, what's up, y'all, man? This is your boy, Y'all's Chosen One, and so are you, man. We are in the book of Jasher. We're in a chapter 44. Chapter 44. And this corresponds with uh, Genesis uh, chapter uh, 39. Okay? So let's go ahead and read it. And the sons of Ishmael, who had brought Joseph from the Midianites, who had bought Joseph... Yeah, from the Midianites who had brought him from his brethren went to Egypt with Joseph and they came upon the borders of Egypt. And when they came near to Egypt, they met four men of the sons of Medan, the son of Abraham. They met four men of the sons of Medan, the son of Abraham. How about that? Who have gone forth from the land of Egypt on their journey. And the Ishmaelites said unto them, Do you desire to purchase this slave from us? And they said, Deliver him over to us. And they delivered Joseph over to them, and they beheld him, that he was a very comely youth, and they purchased him for twenty shekels. So he looked, Joseph was a handsome guy, man. He looked very handsome. And the Ishmaelites continued their journey to Egypt, and, to, and the, and the Medanim also returned that day to Egypt, and the Medanim said to each other, Behold, we have heard that Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, seeketh a good servant who shall stand before him to attend him and to make him overseer over his house and all belonging to him. So to be in Pharaoh's, his graces, you had to, first of all, you had to have a nice appearance about yourself. So evidently Joseph was, was a handsome guy. Now, therefore, come, let us sell him to him for what we may desire, if he be able to give us that which we shall require of him. And these men and he went and came to the house of Potiphar and said unto him, We have heard that thou seekest a good servant to attend thee. Behold, we have a servant that will please thee, if thou canst get, give unto us that which we may desire, and we, and we will sell him unto thee. And Potiphar said, Bring him before me, and I will see him, and if he please me, I will give unto you that which you may require for him. And the Medani went and brought Joseph and placed him before Potiphar, and he saw him, and he pleased him exceedingly. And Potiphar said unto them, Tell me what you require for this youth. And they said, Four hundred pieces of silver we desire for him. And we read that in Genesis uh, 37 verse 36. And Potiphar said, I will give it you if you bring me the record of his sale to you. And we will tell him his history, for perhaps he may be stolen. For his youth is neither a slave nor the son of a slave. But I observe him in the appearance of a goodly and handsome person. And the Medani went and brought, brought unto him the Ishmaelites who had sold him to him. And they told him, saying, He is a slave, and we sold him to them. And Potiphar heard the words of the Ishmaelites, and his giving the silver unto the Medanim. And the Medanim took the silver and went on their journey, and the Ishmaelites also returned home. And Potiphar took Joseph and brought him to his house that he might serve him. And Joseph found favor in the sight of Potiphar, and he placed confidence in him. And made him overseer over his house, and all that belonged to him he delivered over into his hand. That's Genesis chapter 39, verse 5. And Yah was with Joseph, and he became a prosperous man. And Yah blessed the house of Potiphar, Potiphar for the sake of Joseph. Genesis 39, verse 2. And Potiphar left all that he had in the hand of Joseph. And Joseph was one that caused things to come in and go out. And everything was regulated by his wish in the house of Potiphar. So everything was regulated by Joseph. This Hebrew was regulating things up in Egypt. Mizraim. And Joseph was 18, 18 years old handling stuff, man. A youth with beautiful eyes. He had beautiful eyes. And of comely appearance. And like unto him was not in the, the whole land of Egypt. So somebody's eyes, somebody's appearance. He, this dude was he, he was stunning these ladies at that time whilst he was in the master's house going in and out of the house and attending his master 
Zelika, his master's wife. Ah, so now in uh, in the book of Genesis, we don't know Pharaoh's wife name, but now we know her name was Zelika. Her name was Zelika. His master's wife lifted up her eyes toward Joseph, and she looked at him, and behold, he was a youth, comely and well favored. She he already had her, and just by looking, at her, she was she was caught, she was mesmerized, and she cut and and she coveted his beauty in in her heart. He was like, man, this look at this man. Oh my God, that's what she was saying, and her soul was fixed upon Joseph, and she enticed him. Day after day, and Zelika persuaded Joseph daily. But Joseph did not lift up his eyes to behold his master's wife. Man, as a Hebrew, maybe those nasty, maybe those nasty Hamite Egyptians could sleep with each other wives. But Joseph was a Hebrew. He still had his Hebrew customs. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, he just kept that Hebrew things about himself he did that's what he did man y'all was with this dude and he enticed him daily with his to discourse to lie with her or ever to look at her but joseph would not hearken to her genesis 39 verse 8 and she said unto him if thou would not do according to my words i will chastise thee with the punishment of death and put an iron yoke upon thee. See, these Egyptians were already, you know, they was they was doing this slavery stuff, man. You hear that yoke of iron? The same thing that the Grecians did to us when we came over here on the slave ship. This yoke of iron. And Joseph said to her, "Surely, the Most High, who created man, looseth the felt fetters of prisoners." And it is he who will deliver me from thy prison and from thy judgment. And Joseph was like, all right, man, if you want to put me in prison, put me in prison. It's, you know, there's no injustice in it, but, if, you know, if that's to happen, it's to happen. And when she could not prevail over him to persuade him and her soul being still fixed upon him, her desire threw her into a grievous sickness. And she wanted this dude so much, man, she started getting sick. And all the women of Egypt came to visit her, and they said unto her, Why art thou in this declining state, that thou lackest nothing? Surely thy husband is a great and esteemed prince in the sight of the king. Shouldest thou lack anything what thy heart desireth? It was like an answer to them, saying, This day it shall be made known to you, whence this disorder springs in which you see me. And she commanded her maidservants to prepare food for all the women. And she made a banquet for them.